Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm going to show how I made this altered vintage book cover. Now, I have used original paper ephemera from the 19th and early 20th century. But I have also made scans of these elements, and they are on my website, and they are free. So please go on over there. The link is in the text below this video. If you like altered books, book arts, and journal arts, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications, and you will have more of them in your life. Let's go alter a book cover. I am going to talk in a few minutes about the collage layout process, why things go where they go. But first, let's look at some of the pieces that I'm using. Here's the book cover itself. It's marbled. It's from the 1880s. And it is well distressed and, and dinged up there. When I have an altered book cover, I like to not frame it because I really enjoy being able to turn it around from time to time and see the, the book covery part of it. But that is just personal taste. For the first background, I'm going to start with this French legal document. It is from 1859, and uh, I love that it has over here some accounting, it's marginalia. It's also got a lot of flourishes, a lot. A couple of pieces here, some mail. This is a vintage postcard. Ooh la la. But we're going to use this side so that can use this as a kind of a frame with this beautiful handwriting. This postcard, this envelope is from 1906. It's addressed to Monsieur Picardin. And um, the reason it has black around the edges is because this would have been for mourning. Either the household was in mourning for someone who had died, or this might have even had a card announcing the death of someone. So when you see a black border like this, it indicates mourning. Here is a tin type. It's actually a photograph on tin from the 1860s. I, I collect old tin types. The costumes are fantastic. I really love this little bowler hat she's wearing and the expression. Uh, let's see. If you like tin types, I do have some for sale in my shop. There's a link to those in the text below. This border is a rough torn border from a, a French ledger sheet from 1912. It got wet somewhere through the years and it's made the ink bleed. And I really like that. Finally, I have some birds, and I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. So uh, the birds themselves are from uh, a, a, a textbook about birds that I bought in a thrift store in Zurich. And that was a good day. Now I'm going to start putting this together, and as I sometimes do, I'm going to talk about what I did not use to show how you get to the layout and the piece that you do use. The first thing is, how do I want to orient my paper that is the background? This actually has an organically correct feel, up and down wise, but I would also, I know I'm going to be putting that border here, and so I would be losing quite a bit of that marginalia that I fancy. So for to start, I am going to try turning it this way. Uh, it does mean that I will lose the flourishes, but that can't be helped. I may yet turn it around, though. We'll see. This I, this border, I rough tore from the ledger sheet, just just to the eye. And I really like a little border like this. It gives interest to the eye, layers, and uh, anchors your page. I have pulled it down like this because of something called visual thirds or the rule of thirds. 
that says that a piece on a page is more interesting if it is a third offset on the page as opposed to perfectly symmetrical. I mean, that's okay, but it is actually more interesting if it's a third at the, up at the page or in this case, a third to the bottom of the page. Let's see. I'm going to put the postcard here and I've already decided that I'm going to just use that as a kind of a frame for the tin type. I'm pulling her down just a little bit because I don't want it to be too matchy matchy there on the edge. I really like that you got this edge, this edge, this edge, and then this line here. Now let's try out some birds. The first one is a kingfisher. I really like how his branch could perch right into that border. And that would look very interesting. I like the vertical, 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 vertical. That's good. But even though this is a good layout, he's not acting with the, the ladies in this picture. So what I'm going to do in a few minutes is turn everything around and see if he looks better facing them. In the meantime, let's look at the words, the birds that I have that are looking in. I really like this a lot because um, he's very stern, he's very black, and that suits, to, to me, looks like another, maybe her in a different lifetime. They, they just both have that very strange, stern, but thoughtful look. So they very, very much suit each other. Here's a kookaburra. Hey, nice people in Australia who write and say, when are you going to use the kookaburra? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, again, this is perching on the border. That looks so good. And again, you've got the vertical, vertical. Now I have the woodpeckers. This image is going to look good in any layout. That's why it looks so good here. But it's also taking up a lot of valuable real estate, covering up all of the writing and the stamp and everything on that piece. So I'm not so sure. I am working on an altered book that is this size right now. I may put it there. But let's turn the pieces around and see what happens then. I've reversed the major components there. Let's try it again. See if that orients, if that gives a different narrative with the same birds. That's a little bit better. We've got some of the stamps showing. I'll have to think about it. We have that very stern bird with the odd beak. That does look good. In this case, I actually kind of like that he's not looking at them. I think that this is a different story. He's kind of uh, pretending that he can't see them, even though he can see them, and they know that he can see them. That's a very strong contender. Now, this is a, a kind of a buzzard, I suppose, maybe a vulture. And like the previous bird, he suits this uh, layout really well because, again, you know, something about her black frock and his uh, heavy coat really suits th the balance throughout. I like that, too. Hey, look who it is. This is more whimsical, although there is a kind of a whimsical darkness as well here because of his expression looking down. I don't know. And then we again have the, the Kingfisher. For some reason, I don't like this as much as I thought I would. So I'm afraid he's going to have to wait for another layout. I'm going to 
mess around, stand to my tippy toes and squint my eyes, looking down at this thing, make a decision, and be right back. I am going to go with this one. I just really feel that the balance with the darkness, a whimsical darkness, it, it, this, this is the one. I do think that the balance is a little bit off here, though. So I'm going to move this just a tiny bit, bit more like that. And I think I'm going to move this. I want him to actually, for his feet, to be perching on the bottom of the border. And I don't want him sticking out like that. So also right there. It's just, you know, he's, you can't see that extra square. So it has a nice, instead of being a bunch of pieces, it's one piece now. I'm going to glue that down. I'm using acrylic gel medium. You can use a, a white craft glue or a Mod Podge, but this is, this is what I use. That was the layout, and I have added some embellishing. I've taken my charcoal pencil. This is Conte, but there's a ton of different brands. And I went around every border of the main pieces. Just drew around them like that. And here, around the bird, here. And then I just smudged. You can use a blending tool. I can never find mine. You just want to go around then and smudge that charcoal. It really makes the page pop. It just really makes everything come away from the page. Finally, I'm going to go around with my chunky, this is a chunky XL stick, graphite stick by Derwent. These are water soluble, but I'm not going to do that today because in addition to being water soluble, they really smudge beautifully. So just go around all of my edges here, messy. And I'm kind of picking up a little bit of the brown sepia color that's in the, the yellowed paper and also in the, the ink. So that's going to very subtly accent that. And just again, just go around the whole thing and smudge. It gives it a frame effect that pulls it together really, really well. Like that. This piece is for sale. There's information about that in the text below. And again, there's also in the text below, there's a link to free scans of some of these components. So you can go get those and make something similar for yourself. While there, please subscribe to my online newsletter. It comes out every month with um, art tutorials, sometimes giveaways, free scans, uh, the occasional 
pep talk. So please join me. Got a new one coming out a week from Sunday. Please leave me some feedback or questions in the comment section below. YouTube will like me better if you do. Until next week, happy making.